this is our holiday mailbag episode. We're doing this again. 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 Because you all had so many questions. We just had to do it one more again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Our first one is from Bourgeois Nerd. Mm. I believe him. I want that newsletter. That actually, yeah. <laughs> I, bet, I bet there is one. Be careful what you wish for. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's Megyn Kelly's new venture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once something has been kept, can it ever get taken out, if you will? What would it need to do to be taken out of storage? What is this, a riddle? Oh, can we undo <laughs> Are you the Sphinx? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, when we say keep it to something, it doesn't actually get locked away in a storage like we're in <laughs> yeah. Batman's right, cave. Not, maybe there is a there is a an interesting difference here we should make, which is between keeping something and canceling something. Yeah. Mm. We really They're do typically different. reserve canceling for like monsters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I would say most of the time things are brought out of storage necessarily because we don't know how to dispose of shit. Listen, there was a time I didn't I would never have said I might have said keep it to her like years ago when she was doing all of those unnecessary Nicki Minaj collabs. But there was a time I was not an Ariana Grande fan. Right. Didn't feel strongly about her. Didn't really care about the music. And look at me now. So Wearing your rabbit ears. Exactly. And your I'm long here. Pony I got hair. my ponytail on. You can't <laughs> see it. It's as long as I am tall. And uh, and I've come back from it, so I feel like you can you can reverse a keep it. I mean, I'm I'm sure we've said keep it to Justin Timberlake many a time, <laughs> and uh, and many many more to come, sweetie. Listen, I was out somewhere and I heard "Rock Your Body," and that song still goes in. Oh, I was listening to Future <laughs> Sets "Love Sounds." <laughs> And I was like, damn, this album was good. Also, because Timbaland, Timbaland lost his mind. Thanks, yeah. Timbaland, and thanks, Pharrell, for Rock Your Body. Yeah. Th- I think that's maybe the issue on Man in the Woods. Who did Justin Timberlake work with? Yeah. Not two of the most prolific producers to ever make The Unabomber. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, who else was in, out in there? In his little wooden shack. And Leo in The Revenant. That's right. Yes, of course. Um, also, okay, can I say something about Rock Your Body? For Okay, the year that song came out, until I was... Corrected by multiple friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when he says, I'm going to have you naked by the end of this song, I thought he said, <laughs> I'm going to dip your naked body into this sauce. What is in your brain? I, <laughs> I'm going to have you, I'm going to dip you naked in this, this sauce? sauce? <laughs> what did you think he said to Janet at the Super Bowl? Something like that. I always forget that he wrote that McDonald's jingle. Yeah. I'm loving it. He's like responsible for a cultural moment. He's like secretly done during That's the money that bought Jessica Biel's failed restaurant. Oh, fudge, yeah. <laughs> it's gone. I know. You know, I, uh, I'm i glad to have been on the front lines of you real journalism it. when I reviewed it. I brought my friend Goldie, who was three at the time. Uh, she was like three or four. Goldie seemed to enjoy it, but uh, I do remember we ordered a club sandwich with... So the club sandwich, right, is like 20 bucks. And then we added caviar on top, which is an option, because we were expensing it. And then it was like a $55 sandwich. Let me tell you, club sandwiches do not need caviar. I bet they don't. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Good to know. Maybe just in case. <laughs> With like the bacon and stuff on it, too? Yeah. Oh, wow. Actually, they plopped it on top. And so then you had to kind of like scrape it off and add it. It wasn't all of that to say, not surprised it's gone. It seems like a poorly put together caviar sandwich, too. Like, oh, pay $25 just for us to throw this on the bread. It was. Anyway, Yvette, she would like to know, if you had to listen to only one Christmas song for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, All I Want for Christmas is You. Yeah, right? I feel like that's the answer. I feel like that has also, to be I it. feel like we're heading towards that as a society. Like, it's just going to be that song for the rest yeah. of the time. Um, the lambs are going to take out every other song. Right. Do you think the lambs will gain in strength as the years go on? Yeah. Okay. Payola. Um, right. <laughs> um, this is technically, you can argue it's not a Christmas song, but it's in um, Mame, right? We Need a Little Christmas. I love that song. Cool. Can I, can I also say, I went down a deep All I Want for Christmas is You rabbit hole like a week ago and learned that Mariah Carey, the genius, the goat, wrote that song with one other person. Oh, yeah. Because she she often does not get the credit she deserves where she actually writes most of her songs and like her hits. And she there was an estimate that she has made. Guess how much money she's made from that song? Just that song. I mean, because it's like number one every year. I would say it's like $30 million. Okay, that's a guess. What's your guess? I think it's maybe like over $3 billion. 
Mm. Close. Sixty million dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah. From that one song. And it's never gonna die. And it's never gonna die. That is how you do it. Listen, she is the queen. As I was saying with um Amy K when we talked on the show, like she doesn't have anything to prove to these girls Mm-mm. anymore. She had people physically leaving their home to buy albums. Right. Right now people are just like Ugh, I want to listen to, you know, this Camila Cabello song. Let me just stream it from my bathroom. Right. I had to get my mom to drive me to Target to get that glitter soundtrack. Oh, sure. Yeah, it was that took some work. I <laughs> owned uh, Rainbow. That was the first one I bought by her. But I had a cousin, the only person of color I knew my entire life <laughs> until I was 18. She had all of Mariah Carey's albums, and she taught me to like her. Where did you live? Whoville? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the suburbs of Chicago are... The, Poland took over. Let's oh, just say I've, it. I've heard of them. Yeah. White Flight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do another question. <laughs> this is from Jenny. Jenny says, "I am a fan from Nicaragua, and I wanted to ask, what is your favorite show that was ultimately canceled? Mine was Pushing Daisies." What's up, Nicaragua? Ooh, oh, goodness. Uh, Managua capital? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know a Nicaraguan accent. Do, do I, I would prefer you did it. For the best. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank God. Uh. What was yours, Kara? I don't know if it, I don't know if this is a favorite, but this is maybe this is one in recent memory. There was a show, I think it was on TBS called Sirens. Mm. That was actually like a really good comedy. It was about EMT workers and it was really funny and it was like pretty they were in Chicago, the part with black people. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh, yes, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, yes. It was, <laughs> but um I don't know, it was just like a it was one of those just like well written, enjoyable comedies that that I could put on. Um but it was like TBS and they're weird and and so it was canceled. Gotcha. Um, show for me. Uh, I was a happy endings person for a while. Mm. Uh, enjoyed that show. Uh, I, I had to be convinced for a while because it was in the wake of Thirty Rock and I was still mourning that. But it really did pick up the pieces nicely. And I think I think happy my favorite one of the shows is Casey great. Wilson. I think she's my favorite. Happy, happy endings is fucking great. Hilarious. Like you can literally just throw it on. Right. Yes. Uh huh. And I'm always gonna laugh. They all are so talented. Yeah. Uh, just bring it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. They're all hanging out. They all seem like nice people. <laughs> uh, what is mine? I mean, I would go with something like Happy Ending, too. But actually, I think it's the one that um, Jenny picked. I loved Pushing Daisies. Pushing Daisies. Pushing Daisies was a great show. I actually have to amend mine. It is American Vandal. Oh, yeah. Because I cannot believe Netflix canceled it after only two seasons. Both seasons were fucking hilarious that premise like that the whole that show was so smart and funny and good and i am not happy about it so that is my pick it always is kind of unnerving when there's an entire cast of people you've never seen before and they're all great right they were um they were so good um and like it's it's nice to see them sort of out in the wild now but um yeah that show was great well watch season two of insatiable <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next question. Uh, this is from Brandon. Who would play you and your co-hosts in the movie version of Keep It? Oh, God. Um, can I tell you something? I couldn't think of Andrew Garfield's last name recently, uh, which made me feel like I was beginning my still Alice decline. He is allegedly canoodling with Rita Ora. Oh, I know. So Rita Ora will play you and Andrew. I mean, like, there's, there's, there's so, <laughs> there are so few people on the planet with this, like, five-head situation I've got going on, and he makes it look handsome, so I would go with him. Okay. I don't have, I don't, I have a thing. I don't think anyone looks like me. Like, I've never seen an app, or just someone where I'm like, oh, I see the resemblance. Ooh, other girl, than like you my, look like Whoopi Goldberg. Right. <laughs> 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 other than like my family. So I don't even, so there's that. I don't know who I would get to play me. Mm-hmm. Even in spirit? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think in spirit. Um, Kiki Palmer. <laughs> That's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> She could. I, I, mean, I, I gotta say, I've, I've spent some time with Kiki Palmer, and she is energetic. <laughs> <laughs> She's very sweet, but had like a ton of energy, which I don't know if that's my particular vibe. But she's a good actor, so maybe she could pull it off. Who's playing Ira? Oh yeah. Oh, you're waiting for me to pick. You should. The face you just made at me was like. <laughs> He has his hand on his on he has his chin on his hand like he's Jane Mansfield like <laughs> posing in a portrait. Um, who would I pick for Ira? I'm sure there's like an obvious answer to this. 
Um, 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 Kara, you, you coming up with anything over there? I'm not good at these. Ira, do you have someone in mind? I don't. I don't know. For me, it feels weird. Can I play myself? I, I guess you have to. I'm an actor. That's, oh, that's I have a right. degree that You took a movement so. class, yeah. I did, yeah. Stanislavski. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, that's not the one where you pretend the orange juice is there. No, Stanislavski is just like, I believe I am here. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the other one is, I don't know, Sturman Drang? Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> I know, I know words. I know theater words. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. I'm playing myself. <laughs> okay, that's settled. We're moving on. Moving on. That was a weird question. I guess it wasn't a weird question. We just can't answer it. Uh, this is from Lou. For Ira, do you keep up monthly with any comic books? And if so, what is your favorite current title? I'm sorry I read this question. I didn't mean to enable it, but go ahead. Wow. First of all, uh, I still read Spider-Man, the Miles Morales version. And I've also been reading Wonder Woman. I know, I've fallen off on comics lately. Um, there are some really new interesting titles coming out from Vertigo that I really want to get into, like um, American Carnage. Uh, that one looks very interesting, and it deals with race in America. So other than that, I need to get back into comics. How about y'all tweet at me <laughs> comics that I should How be reading? How about it? I fell off. I've been busy. I've been trying to... I don't know. I just haven't been reading books. I haven't reading books. Well, should we do the next book question? Yes. So Anne asks, what was Kara's favorite book she read in 2018? And what's one book you all would recommend to understand the current moment? And, damn, Anne, that is three questions. And what's Lewis's favorite Karen Carpenter song? <laughs> How nice of her. Um, I got to say, the book that I enjoyed the most was The Truth About Animals, which I talked about like incessantly, but it was so, it was just like the world is crazy. I cannot believe there are this many animals. I cannot believe all of this stuff is happening. They do all these things. It was so like, it's just like my mind was blown. I can't believe that the world exists and all of these things are in it. Um, and that was like a crazy entertaining read. Um, a book, right now I'm reading a book called The Death of Truth which is real depressing and it's on like the it's sort of like the attack on reason and truth in the age of Trump and it goes through just like this whole um it goes through this whole history of like postmodernism and how we just sort of got into this bullshit where everything was kind of subjective and because language could be subjective and all of this shit and that's how you end up with someone like Trump who can just say words that don't mean what they mean and and says that they mean what they mean and it goes through like Hitler and other fascists and things like that so um it is it is light in that is a it is a small book it is like pocket you know it's a one you can I love digestible around. terror. Yeah, mm. but um, it is it is like a pretty intense read. But I think it is very necessary considering what we're dealing with right now. So. Uh, my favorite Carpenter song is probably. Uh, I know you all were waiting on the edge of your seats. Um, <laughs> uh, yesterday, once more. But I would also throw. I mean, like the classics. We've only just just begun. Superstar. It's that rainy days and Mondays. But yesterday, once more. I love a song about nostalgia. Touch me when we're dancing. Oh, I know you love that song. That's your favorite album by then. It is. Made in America. Listen, I do like the Carpenters. That's the surprise twist. I know, right. I've liked them all year. Whenever people ask me about this podcast, I'm always like, guys, secretly, Ira <laughs> knows all the shit I do. He just laughs at me for talking mm. about it. That's called <laughs> bullying. <laughs> Speaking of bullies. <laughs> Actually, by the way, I did remember um, you should read West Coast Avengers and Hawkeye by Kelly Thompson because she's a great writer. Anyway, that's it. So we're we're nearing the end of this, guys. We got one more question. Oh, okay. You ready? Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. is from Colin. What are your thoughts about New Year's resolutions, and what are yours? I'm always pledging to do shit all the time due to being a progressive, active, living my own life type of person. That said, um, I'm not hateful about... New Year's so you resolutions. make New Year's resolutions every day of your life. That's right. Every day is a new year for me because I'm losing my mind. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, 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 I, honestly, I could stand to read a lot more. Do you know what I could stand to do more? Watch more television shows. I just like movies because they're short and then you're done with them. And I'm daunted by TV. And there's so much I haven't seen that I have pretended to see. But what I'm also you, what's your what's your biggest TV lie that you feel most. You know, like the worst one that you said that you watched that you haven't watched. Uh, I've watched, mm -hmm. I've watched two episodes of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and I wish I had seen. That's but, the biggest one that you're concerned about. Oh, I've never seen Game of Thrones. I've never okay. seen. Um, 
got, I, like I did actually watch like Mad Men was the last show I watched all of. So anything in between, anything after that, <laughs> I'm fucked. Well, damn. Mm-hmm. I love a New Year's resolution. You? you know, I just love marching into the New Year's boardroom, mm. throwing it all on the table. Mm-hmm. So you make one every year? I'm thinking about Dynasty again. Okay. Sorry. That's all I do. I was also going to say, what is a New Year's boardroom? (laughs) (laughs) 2018's office. What's it? 2019's office. I've got some things to say. Okay. Okay. I I don't like a New Year's resolution. I like a New Year's mood. So I like going into the new year with a general, like, (sighs) whose mood are we trying to do this year? Is this a Mariah Carey year? Mm. Is this going to be a Michelle Obama year? Am I going to try to do a lot of work? Am I going to do like a Cassie year where I maybe just try to find a man to spend all of his money on me? Just sure. like, you know, it. I you have to Simple go Simple virtues. Yes, just like a general mood into the year, less than a resolution. I want an Eve year. Listen. Just like a castle in Europe somewhere, you drinking some- champagne and taking care of some white man's kids. Listen, she's pregnant now, too. Is she? Mm-hmm. Oh. Is she still on the talk? She, she sewed it up. No, I don't know. Is she still on the talk? You can never know who's on the talk at any given moment. It's, it's, it's a legal knowledge. I don't know why she'd be on the talk. She's married to, like, a very, very rich white man. She doesn't need to be doing the talk. She, she got, I think she got a little bored. That's yeah. why she went on tour with Gwen Stefani. <laughs> it was great. Recently? Like, two years ago. Oh. Well, I'm going to Eve is a good mood for the year. So we all have to find rich white husbands. I also feel like she has looked the same ever since she has been famous, which is definitely the 90s. Lewis, you know what a, t- a television show you missed? Eve's sitcom. Which was? It was on like UPN. On UPN. Oh, oh I kind of remember that. She owned a boutique. Oh, yes. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. But my favorite part of that sitcom was that it was called Eve. And I don't believe the name of her character was named Eve. <laughs> <laughs> it starred her as... Well, on Seinfeld, uh, his name isn't... Oh, no, wait, never mind, it is. <laughs> yes. Uh, she played Shelley Williams. <laughs> but the show is called Eve. <laughs> that is baffling. That's actually pretty incredible. <laughs> Go in uh, with that mood into 2019, just like, do whatever our, the fuck a, you want. That is our resolution. Yeah. Merry Christmas featuring Eve. Is that what you say on Christmas Eve? It is, but I say now. Yeah. What? You know, <laughs> you know, like Gwen Stefani, Merry Christmas featuring Eve. Okay. I, I think that is the perfect note to go out <laughs> on this year. <sighs> Lewis. <laughs> I am, I, you know what? I'm not sorry. I'm glad. Guys, uh, I cannot believe you stuck with us all year. Woof. What's your problem? God bless. Bless you all. Everyone.